Hey, how's it going? I am Xerxes, you're in my workshop, and in this video I'm going to show you how to build your first wargaming board. Cheap, fast and easy. probably there sitting and thinking this sounds a little bit too good to be true and my answer to you my dear non-believer is eh, it depends to be perfectly honest depending on your situation you might have some of the things that you will need or at least part of them you will probably have to go and buy a few things but I'm going to break this video down into three tiers you know in terms of difficulty and materials needed so you can watch it and then adjust your plans according to your wallets effectively or your needs or your space as well now if you're building a board for the first time I suggest you start with kill team or warcry board you know something small something manageable or if you want to jump into 40k, like straight away, I would suggest combat patrol size, which is two kill team boards put together. I'll be working on one because of the space that I've got available, but you can expand. For tier one, we'll need the following things, starting with the base on which we're going to build everything. Personally, I recommend XPS foam board, mainly because it's durable and it's light. You can use chipboard if you have it available, but I find it very unwieldy and heavy. Or you can use standard polystyrene, but unfortunately it is too brittle and it's too light. You know, if we're talking thickness, I would say 2 inches, it's a perfect sort of thickness for that board. No. This is a 2 inch board and as you can see it is quite a chonker and I'm holding a really sort of a small piece in here but to be honest if you buy two full size pieces they're gonna take a lot of space so that's another reason why I actually recommend building a smaller board you know, unless you've got a massive table and a lot of space then just go nuts yeah a lot of people underestimate the amount of space that uh, gaming tables take you know so six by four table is massive you know you won't know how big it is before it's actually in front of you you'll obviously need glue I use a Mod Podge but PVA glue is a perfectly fine Another thing that is really useful is isopropyl alcohol. If you don't want to, can't or shouldn't use alcohol, you can use a dish soap or some sort of detergent instead. Then you'll need one or two spray bottles. Now for our main texture, I recommend tile grout. Pick something earthy. Check the soil you've got in front of your house or nearby so you can get the color that you want. Coconut fiber substrate to add extra texture. Uh, you can use soil instead but yeah, you'll get a different texture and it'll be cheaper you won't have to buy anything uh, but make sure you sterilize it or bake it beforehand. I mean I am all for random encounters during the battle but having a full-scale infestation halfway through the match is not a good thing trust me on that. Now you'll need few acrylic paints, black, white, brown and yellow, it'll be enough. Then obviously brushes to apply our um, paint and uh, glue. If you're using XPS board as your main surface, you'll need a decent knife to cut it and obviously a really good metal ruler. For the purpose of this uh, tutorial, I am going to use three pieces of foam board. The big one will be used for tier three, so I can show you full sort of scale and capabilities of uh, XPS board. I made it from two thinner pieces of foam that I 
sandwiched together using glue. For tier 1 and 2, I'm going to use these two smaller pieces just to illustrate the basic concepts. Next thing you need to do after cutting your board down to the right size is to mix tile grout and your coconut fiber substrate or soil together. Tile grout is mainly for bonding purposes and creating like a, a very fine texture, something that resembles a fine sand. Now soil or coconut fiber will create the rougher sort of, you know, bits. Uh, if you're using coconut fiber substrate, make sure that you buy a fine fiber, not those big bits. The bigger the bits, the more difficult it'll be for them to, you know, get stuck with the glue. So make sure that you have fine coconut fiber. I actually saved mine, so I've got uh, a really, really fine one in the jar and slightly more coarse in the bag. So I'm mixing and kind of blending it to get the texture that I want. One thing to note, you'll be making a lot of mess. This is sort of the first step that is really messy. I mean, tire grout is pretty much almost dust, so it will spread everywhere. And if you want to sneeze, sneeze like as far away from this thing as possible, <laughs> or there's gonna be trouble. After you're done mixing your tile grout and coconut fiber slash soil together, grab your board, pour some glue on it and spread it around. Make sure that the whole board is completely covered with a fairly decent thick coat of glue. And then grab your mix and sprinkle it on the board. Make sure that the coat is also thick and it covers all the edges and all the areas. We want a really, really nice, thick and heavy texture. After you're happy with the cover, spray some isopropyl alcohol on it. If you're not using the alcohol, add some dish soap to the spray bottle with watered down PVA glue, or in my case, Mod Podge, and then spray the whole bottle with uh, the glue. Make sure that the cover is also thick, as thick as you can see it on the screen, and then leave it for at least 12 hours to dry. Most of the time that you'll spend on this project will be waiting for things to dry. So I suggest you do every step in the evening, so things can dry overnight. And that's the first step. You know, you can finish at this point, you know, just call it a day, and you'll have a perfectly fine board with a really, really nice texture. But I'm going to show you how to Spice it up a little bit if you've got a few more things. Oh, and uh, don't forget to paint those edges black, unless you're a secret worshipper of Slanesh, then yeah, it's fine, leave them pink. The next thing we can do is to add a little bit of contrast to our ground cover. So grab your paints and mix brown, white and a little bit of yellow to get a color that it's lighter than the ground cover and wipe off most of the paint from the brush and apply it to the texture. Make sure that you move it lightly, we're doing dry brushing, so we're leaving a little bit of paint on the most raised areas. You can also do a little bit of stippling to create lighter patches as well, but don't go too crazy, don't stab the board with the brush, we don't want uh, the, you know, the bits to come off, some of them will, they were meant to, so that's not a big deal. Let's add some shadows. For that we'll need a wash. So grab your brown paint again, add some water to the consistency of a basically almost a dirty water. Then add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol or dish soap to improve the flow of the paint a little bit then use a brush to apply it to the board and 
because it's watered down and it has a different flow it will go into the recesses and darken the lower areas so it will create a really nice contrast with that dry brush that we've done earlier and now all you need to do is to give it maybe an hour to dry or use a hair dryer if you're in a hurry bonus step if you've got some pastels lying around especially those in greenish yellowish brownish sometimes even reddish department you can scrape them off with a knife and apply them to the board then spread them around blend them around with uh, a dry brush that way you can create like moss deposits or maybe sulfur deposits if you use yellow or some other chemicals materials or fungi that grow on the ground you know extra differentiation Would you look at that? I've just made a cool display board for my Death Guard kill team. Okay, let's move to tier 2. For that you will need flock. Personally, I recommend sawdust flock, at least at the beginning. Not the most durable, but it'll do. Grab three colors. Light green, mid green and dark green. You can also take some of each color and put them together to create like a mixed blend. If you're feeling a little bit crazy, you can grab a small bag of fine foam flock. Just one. Now, this shot didn't look dodgy at all, just, you know, bags of green things. It is sawdust flock, I swear. <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, moving on. At this point, you just need to grab your flocks and just sprinkle them around. Uh, start with the mixed blend. One thing to note, when you grab your flocks to blend them don't use all of them just use a little bit like a spoonful of each because if you don't like the blend you won't be able to separate it later unless you've got tweezers and a lot of time so mix them together maybe in different proportions see if you like it and then uh, mix some more so what i do here is i start with my mixed blend then i add a little bit of uh, light green then mid green then dark green i see what works and then i apply it then i can use the coconut fiber as well the fine co coconut fiber to kind of break up the patches that i don't like you can use soil instead of um, coconut fiber and after that i sprinkle a little bit of uh, foam flock here and there to create like uh, bushes or like under bushes like small you know patches of greenery like raised green uh, bits i would say that's the best word i could come up with <laughs> after i'm happy with um the result grab more isopropyl alcohol yet again if you don't use the alcohol make sure that the next step which is watered down glue contains some dish soap or detergent to improve the flow of the glue and you guessed it more watered down glue another thick coat and another 12 hours of waiting unfortunately that was 10 minutes of work 12 hours of waiting welcome to building dioramas And here's another display board, this time for my freebooters, Pirate Orcs. Okay, tier 3. What we're gonna need is Sculptor Mold, 
which is basically a mixture of plaster and uh, paper fibers. I make my own, but if you want to use it yourself, I suggest you buy a bag yourself, at least to learn how the material works. Then I'm going to use a little bit of polystyrene, just, you know, classic leftover packaging polystyrene, a bunch of coffee stirrers and a small bag of lichen. Now, lichen is actually pretty cheap, as long as you don't buy it at a hobby store. I mean, I've got a box in here. There you go. And this big box cost me $9. Yeah, $9. Oh, it's getting a bit dry. This is a natural color of lichen. Check your local florists or, for example, shops online that sell things for floral decorations. You can get all sorts of uh, lichen. Support your local hobby stores by buying your minis there, not overpriced plants. Okay, let's begin building the board from the scratch on tier 3. So the first thing I'm going to do is to break up that packaging and bunch those chunks together to create the basis for a mound or a hill. I just put them together fairly loosely and glue them with Mod Podge. The next feature is going to be a floor texture, like a wooden floor. So I use broken up coffee stirrers to sort of emulate a floor of a building that was long forgotten and destroyed or it's dilapidated. So something to differentiate the ground. The third feature that we can do with the XPS board is to create cracks, you know, like a cracked rock face. So you can use a sharp knife and carve those cracks. You won't be able to do it with standard polystyrene because you're gonna make a mess all those bits are going to be everywhere and you won't create a satisfactory result you can even forget to do it with a chipboard not a chance and to make it even more believable I am going to grab a rock and roll it around to kind of break up that flat surface creates little undulations something that really resembles that rock now, if you're really good with a knife, you have a sharp knife, or you happen to have a hot wire cutter lying around, you can cut out like really thin sheets or thin slices of the XPS board and glue them to the surface to imitate like an old stone slab stones. And this is what I'm going to do here and I'm going to put a couple of those slab stones in the corner. Something similar to what you can see on Warcry boards, you know, those cardboard ones that you get in terrain sets. You can also use a pen or a pencil to draw textures in XPS board. And this is what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to roughly sketch out a tile or tiled floor texture in one of the corners to imitate the ruins of an old tower that's also been long abandoned. Now, if you're really good with a knife, have a sharp knife or have a hot wire cutter lying around, I feel like I'm repeating myself. Um, anyways, you can also cut out bricks from XPS board. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm adding wall compartments to uh, our ruined tower. I don't want it to be too high because it can get like really brittle and it can break off later. So just two, maybe three bricks stacked on top of each other. Just something that will create that cover and it'll just barely stick out from the ground. Let's return to those slab stones for a minute. I use a pen to draw some textures or shapes in them. You know, something to add 
a bit of variety to them. You know, it, they are supposed to be left by some sort of ancient civilization somewhere, you know, they were left for ages, so no one really knows what they do. They can just go crazy in here, create whatever you feel like it. And then to kind of spice them up even more, I use a blade to snap off bits and pieces of them, create little cracks in them to show that they've been destroyed over time. Let's create a couple of rocks. If you have some offcuts lying around, break them up. Use your fingers to snap off chunks of the polystyrene. Make sure that there is only one flat surface left. That's the one that's going to be glued to the board itself. Okay, enough with the features. Let's do some painting. So I crack open uh, black paint and I undercoat all the uh, rock and stone elements. Then I use different mixtures of uh, white, black and yellow paint and dry brush and stipple all those different colors to like blend them together make sure that the rock is not like super uniform just to try to make it a little bit more interesting. And the next step is washing. But before I do the stone elements first, I kind of tint the wooden floor a little bit. I mean, we already have the wooden texture, we already have the basic color of the coffee stirrers, so now we only need to create a brown wash to stain them. And after that I create a black wash Again, with uh, really watered down paint, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol or a dish soap if you don't use alcohol. And then just wash every single rock and brick and tile and slab stone to make sure that those shadows pop. And I finish off all the features with a very light dry brush of pure white just to make sure that the topmost elements sort of pop and create a really nice contrast with the shadows to create even more depth. Okay, let's do some terraforming. I mix up my sculptor mold with uh, a little bit of water and I start applying it first to the hill to cover up that uh, polystyrene packaging and to wrap it around the rocks that I made from XPS board. Then I actually raise the ground in the top left corner where the rocks are to kind of uh, also wrap it around the broken rock texture to create a really nice ground around it. And the last step is to apply a small mound over the ruined tower just to show that it's been forgotten by time and things have grown over it and uh, you know the ground covered it, the wind brought more earth and soil so it's really long forgotten and well, no one has visited this place for a long time. I leave the sculptor mold to dry for about 10 minutes or so and then I wet my finger and move it around the edges of where the sculptor mold meets the board to kind of blend it together, make sure the transition is as smooth as possible. And this I think is my favorite step of the whole process. So I grab the tile grout and coconut fiber mix, the one that we used in tier 1, and sprinkle it on the board. Obviously I apply glue first, like in tier 1. It's all exactly the same steps plus few extras, you know? So I'm not adding anything extra or something that I haven't mentioned before, you know? So... Just covering the whole board, except the rocks, with that mixture. And you guessed it, 
spraying it with watered down glue with some extra isopropyl alcohol or obviously dish soap. So roughly 24 hours later I start applying all the flocks. I'm doing exactly the same steps as in tier 2. Pure coconut fiber, a little bit of mixed flock, then the light green, the mid green, the dark green. Just mix it up a little bit, you know. I observe how they land on the board and I blend them with their surroundings effectively. You can, when you sprinkle it, you can actually go really low, close to the board, so you can make like um, sort of a thicker patches. And then if you want to kind of spread it around, blend it and be less accurate, you can, you know, lift your hand and sprinkle it from like, uh, sprinkle the flock from like 20 or 30 centimeters away. So you can let the air kind of spread it around and, and blend it. Um, it'll work even better. And I obviously finish off with uh, that little bit of uh, foam flock that I mentioned before. Exactly the same step as in tier 2. And yet again, isopropyl alcohol or a dish soap and watered down glue. It's getting a bit repetitive, I know, but that's the process, but you've got to go through it. Trust me, you'll spend more time waiting for it to dry than actually doing it. And finally, the last part. Lichen. I mean, if you want, you can actually glue it to the board. I personally prefer not to. I prefer to lay it out as a scatter terrain just before the game. Putting lichen on it is pretty simple, you just slap it on and that's it. You've got a bush in the middle of the board. <laughs> that's it. So now I'm laying it out to, you know, create a... like a finished look to the board, because I want to use all the pieces that I said I'm going to use. And there you go. Okay. Come here. And there it is. Hopefully you can see the whole thing. But yeah, that's the finished board. Yeah, you're probably gonna hear a lot of noise from the mic. But yeah, that's basically the whole thing finished. Looks pretty good, I think. Uh, so I'm gonna show you a B-roll of the board and we can call it a day. Oh, yeah. Let me put this away. Ah, there we go. Uh, yeah, I hope you learned something interesting. Oh, these are... <sighs> Sorry, Xerxes from two days ago. <sighs> Sorry about that. Yeah, don't really like that guy. Waffles on too much. I came up with a few things during the editing of the video. So these are a couple of editing afterthoughts. Uh, first of all, the XPS board. There are several different colors that you may encounter. They don't matter, really. The color doesn't matter. Some of them tend to be denser than others. I think the pink one is the hardest to cut, so if you can, grab a different color. But generally they don't matter. They are equally as sturdy. Now, the next thing, if you're worried about um, watered down glue just go with 10 to 1 ratio if you've got your sprayer bottle just fill it you know the tenth of it with um, the glue and the rest with water to be perfectly honest you're not building the targeting system for a missile defense battery it's not a problem if you're off by 20 percent Generally, if you start spraying and the nozzle starts clogging, it means it's a little bit too thick. If you think it's a little bit too thin, you can add a little bit more glue. And if after drying, things keep coming off, just spray them again. It's not a problem. You'll figure it out. It's actually a lot easier than it sounds. The most important question of all, why would you build a board? 
there are plenty of mats that you can buy and you know easy easy to store they don't take a lot of space they are pretty cheap you can carry them around so why would you build a board well for theme and atmosphere basically you know we're playing with 3d figurines with 3d terrain uh, like buildings containers trees so why would the board be flat you know let's leave flat surfaces to board games there is one caveat though personally i think that if you play games that are bigger than 4x4 four four, you should grab a mat mainly because 6x4 massive gaming board is very unwieldy and I'd imagine quite a few of you might be living in a flat so you don't have a lot of space so storing you know that kind of chonker would be a pretty bad idea so if you want to play larger games grab a mat but if you play something smaller maybe something skirmish there is no reason why you wouldn't go like full on with theme at least that's my opinion so uh, you're welcome to kind of say no to that it's not a problem i mean uh, if you're watching this video it means you're interested in building the board so uh, it's not for me to convince you now i have to say that being both like thorough and concise with this topic is pretty difficult so i try to keep a right balance between the two trying to give you as much information as possible as quickly as possible but to be perfectly honest some of the things might be obvious to me but not necessarily to you but thanks to the miracle of youtube you can leave your questions down in the comments below and i can answer them so i guess that's pretty much it for today i hope you found this video enjoyable and informative if you did leave a like and drop a comment and for now that'll be it and i'll see you in the next video bye